welcome to the White House. I am, as always, so thrilled uh, to have all of you join us here today, one of our favorite events just all around. We are so excited. I want to start by thanking the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities for sponsoring these awards, and I'd like to ask all of the committee members here today to stand up so that we can honor them for their service. Please stand. <laughs> I also want to take a moment to acknowledge Representative Jim McDermott. I'm not sure if he's here today because there are votes happening, but if he is, I want to thank uh, him for his service and, and for all the work that he's done. And, and finally, I want to recognize all of the artists, the educators, and administrators who are on the ground every day running the programs that we're honoring today. Every day, you all are providing unparalleled opportunities for our young people to explore every facet of the arts, from dance and, and theater, to writing and music, to history and, and the visual arts. In so doing, doing, you're not just teaching these young people about painting or acting or singing, you're teaching them about hard work and, and discipline and, and teamwork. You're teaching them how to manage their time, something that we all need to learn, uh, how to set goals, and more importantly, how to achieve those goals. And you all have seen firsthand how these skills translate to every part of their lives. Uh, you've seen them realize that if they can compose a song or a poem, then maybe they can write that term paper. Uh, or, or, or finish that math homework, too. We were just having this conversation at home last night at dinner. <laughs> if they can deliver a monologue up on stage with all the grandeur that goes along with what you do, then maybe they can make a presentation in front of the classroom on something not so dramatic. Uh, if they can conduct a quartet or direct a play, then maybe they can lead a student group. Uh, maybe they can one day run a business, or a city, or a state, or maybe even the United States of America. Right? Yeah. That's right. <laughs> and all of you working so hard with these young people are not just helping them use the arts to lift themselves. Uh, you're showing them how they can lift their communities as well, and that's so important because of your programs, because of the work that you're doing. There are students all over this country who are doing great things. Students in Denver, Colorado, uh, who wrote a play about teenage homelessness. Uh, there are students in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who designed a mural to brighten a struggling neighborhood. And through this year's International Honoree Program, Youth Community Media Project, students in Indonesia created their own videos to raise awareness uh, around issues like poverty, women's rights, and the effects of natural disasters. Every day with every lesson you teach, you remind our young people that their story is part of the broader American story. And you show them how they, as artists, can, can challenge our assumptions and help us view our world in new and very unexpected ways. That is precisely what we are trying to do here at the White House as well. Over the past few years, we've worked to make this place a showcase for our country's rich cultural life and to throw open our doors to as many young people as possible. Uh, we've hosted students at, at concerts and workshops on everything from jazz to spoken word poetry to modern dance. Uh, We've done it because we want them to know that they can be part of our arts community, that this community is for them. We say that every year. You own the space. It is yours. Uh, and we want to support your efforts to show them that if they work hard and if they believe in themselves, then anything is possible, anything. Uh, now, I know that what many of you do in, in these, these programs and projects uh, it's not easy, particularly in these difficult economic times. Uh, I know that in this era of belt tightening and budget cuts, all of you are working harder than ever before just to hold things together. Uh, 
But month after month and year after year, in spite of all the challenges, you all keep going. Uh, because you know that for so many of our young people, the arts are not an extra. Uh, you know that the arts are not a luxury. Uh, rather, it, it's a lifeline. It is a lifeline for so many of these kids. And you know that for every young life you transform, there is a tremendous ripple effect. Uh, it happens when that child goes on to mentor and inspire other young people, which many of them do. It happens when a community is lifted by their service. It happens when our economy benefits from their skills and hard work. It happens when our nation and our world are graced by the works of art they go on to create. So make no mistake about it, all of you working on these programs, you are impact multipliers. Uh, you are inspiration multipliers. Uh, and that is the power that you have, that you hold. And it is a truly precious power. And today, I want to honor you all. Uh, I, I want to congratulate you. I want to thank you for everything you do for our kids and, and for our country. You all are amazing. And you should give yourselves a round of applause. Thank you. And with that, it is my pleasure to introduce Margot Lyon, co-chair of the President's Committee on the Arts and the Humanities, who will now say a few words. Thank you all, and God bless. Congratulations. The speaking of inspiration, uh, I'd like to give another hand to the First Lady, who really is an inspiration for all of us. I know. <laughs> on behalf of my co-chair, George Stevens, and the members, all of the members of the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities, thank you, uh, Mrs. Obama, so much for hosting us here today in the White House to bestow our nation's highest honor on these exceptional arts and humanities after school programs. Today we have 12 honorees chosen from hundreds of nominations that are changing lives of young people across the country. Our awardees engage a diverse group of students, exciting their imaginations, encouraging collaborations, and instilling discipline. They are also providing safe and creative havens for young people in some of their most vulnerable after school hours, weekends, and evenings. And because we believe in the ability of the arts and humanities to bridge understanding and connect us to one another without regard to borders, we are delighted to also honor this year's International Spotlight Award winning video program from Indonesia. Before we proceed, I want to thank our key partners, the National Endowment for the Arts, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Institute for Museum and Library Services, and all of our private supporters, and our longtime cooperative partner, the National Assembly of State Art Agencies. Without all of you, for sure, this important day and this important award would not happen. The President's Committee joins with the White House in the belief that a true education for all students not just those destined to become artists or scholars, must include the arts and humanities. Our committee's recent report, Reinvesting in Arts Education, Winning America's Future Through Creative Schools, documents what the award-winning programs we honor today have proven, that high-quality arts and humanities education has a concrete and measurable impact on the futures of our young people. We see that evidence in significantly improved academic performance, higher attendance rate, and a greater knowledge of skills necessary for the 21st century workforce. Just a couple of statistics here. Um, can't leave without statistics. We know that young people who participate in arts education are four times as likely to have high academic achievement levels and three times as likely to have high attendance records. These students more often 
graduate from high school, and for many of them, this is, they are the first in their families to do so. And they go on to live more engaged and active lives in their communities. In closing, I want to mention that in our poll, we too do polls, of past awardees, all, of all the benefits of receiving this award, the financial grant, the national press, the summer conference, the one thing that was consistently cited as the most life-changing by both the program directors and the students who came with them was the opportunity to be here in the White House with the First Lady of the United States and with their peers. So thank you again, Mrs. Obama, for making this day so special for them and for all of us. And with that, I am delighted to invite to the stage a young woman who embodies all of those principles we've been talking about today, a representative from one of this year's winning programs, Humanities Rock. Based in Holyoke, Massachusetts, Humanities Rock, how often do we have rock after humanities? It's kind of wonderful. <laughs> Uh, works with teen mothers who have dropped out of school, exposing them to philosophy, history, and poetry on their way to getting their GED and going to college. Brenda Lees Rivera is going to share with us now her experiences of becoming a poet. Tess, I guess. Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Brandelise Rivera. I'm 18 years old. I have a nine month baby girl named Anaya. I was in culinary arts in high school. I love to cook, my dad is a chef. I was 16 when I was pregnant. I was on my own. When I gave birth, I held my daughter. She was so beautiful, I told myself, I'm not a little girl anymore, I'm a grown woman. And now I have to try hard to give everything to my daughter. After my maternity leave from school, I didn't want to go back. My sister, who had been a teen mom, told me about the care center. At the care center, I was with other teen moms. My daughter's in the daycare right downstairs. The thing I enjoyed the most in the care center was poetry. We all expressed our feelings. It was the first place I opened up to and expressed my stress and my feelings. We read a poem called Minstrel Man by Langston Hughes. He talked about keeping his pain inside and smiling out in the public. That's how I feel. Um, I wanted to read you his poem, Minstrel Man, by Langston Hughes. Because my mouth is so wide with laughter and my throat is deep with song, you don't think I suffer after I held my pain so long? Because my mouth is wide with laughter, you don't hear my inner cry. Because my feet are gay with dancing, you don't know I die. And he actually, I, I'm reading his poem. I thought about my own poem, and I wanted to share it with you guys. It's called My Pain. Because my pain is so strong, I don't show my weakness. In tears I drown when you're not around. My heart's so big that it beats quiet. My weakness stays inside until you're by my side. I laugh to not scream. I smile to not cry. I focus to not lose it. Do you notice my pain inside? And I'm working on getting my GED and starting on to college. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the presentation of the 2011 National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Awards. I'm Rocco Landisman, Chairman of the National Endowment for the Arts. <laughs> the first National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award is presented to Platforms Art Lab in Denver, Colorado. Art Lab runs a year-round arts internship program for at-risk teens, teaming them with established artists to learn skills and create quality works of art. 100% of the program's participants graduate from high school 
and are accepted into college in a city where only 47 percent of students overall graduate on time. Zoom Mix's hands-on program was created in response to gang violence that plagued Boston, Massachusetts in 1991. Their mission is to empower youth through music to make changes in their lives and their communities. Students aged 12 to 15 participate in a year-long program that includes audio technology, songwriting, performance, and radio broadcasting. 100% of participants graduate from high school and are accepted into college. The Native American Composer Apprentice Project in Grand Canyon, Arizona, nurtures the musical talents of Native American teens living on remote Hopi and Navajo reservations. It provides intensive workshops in music composition for string quartets and one-on-one -on -one mentoring by accomplished professionals. Since 2001, high school students living on these reservations have written over 200 new works for string ensembles. Good afternoon. I'm Susan Hildreth, the director of the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Yay. All right. My first time at the awards. I hope I won't flub it up, but here we go. A National Arts and Humanities Program Award is presented to 826 Seattle. Founded by writer Dave Edgers, 826 helps young people improve their writing skills through workshops publishing projects, and individual instruction with professional writers. Children are encouraged to let their imaginations run wild with short stories and poetry projects. 75% of participants speak English as a second language, and 86% of participants reported improved grades. I recently arrived to DC from Seattle, so I'm very proud of 826 Seattle, uh, and was in San Francisco when this originally started, 826 Valencia. So thanks, Dave Edgers, for this great project. <laughs> the Fleischer Youth Art Programs in Southeast Philadelphia conducts visual arts classes and workshops serving over 2,000 students ages 5 to 18. It makes the arts accessible to diverse communities with Cambodian classical dance classes in both, both English and Khmer and many other multicultural experiences that bring the arts to broader audiences. <laughs> Artworks in Grand Rapids, Michigan launched by the Urban Institute for Contemporary Arts, prepares young artists for creative careers by providing resources and intensive hands-on studio classes. Artworks alumni exhibit at local galleries and do internships in national arts organizations. <laughs> Woohoo! Many graduates of that program are now successful in creative industries, and I would just say the president better watch out, huh? <laughs> Hello, my name is Jim Leach. I chair the National Endowment for the Humanities. The next National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award is presented to the Humanities Rock Program at the Community Adolescent Resource and Education Center, known as the CARE Center. This program in Holyoke, Massachusetts provides alternative education for pregnant and parenting teens who have dropped out of school. 
It uses the humanities to inspire and motivate young mothers by engaging them in poetry, reading, writing, and college credit humanities courses that develop critical ways of thinking. 80% of CARE students go on to college. Saturday Academies of American History at the Gilder Lehman Institute of American History provides educational en enrichment through interdisciplinary courses in American history at 23 sites in 10 states and the District of Columbia. This voluntary program takes place on Saturdays, and last year, more than 4,000 middle and high school students attended courses, improving their basic literacy, strengthening their knowledge of history, literature, and the arts. <laughs> Sojourn to the Past in San Bruno, California immerses high school students from diverse backgrounds in a 10-day academic journey along the path of the civil rights movement through five states. Employing rigorous research, <laughs> analysis, and dialogue the program encourages deep exploration of the civil rights movement and its relationship to current social issues. Sojourn was honored by the United States Congress as the longest running program of its kind. Hello, I'm uh, George Stevens. I'm co-chairman of the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities, of which Michelle Obama is our honorary chair. <laughs> A National Arts and Humanities Youth Program Award is presented to Positive Directions Through Dance, which serves some of Washington, D.C.'s most vulnerable communities, offering tuition-free dance training to at-risk youth. Participants also receive weekly workshops in nutrition, financial history, and job readiness. 100% of the program's participants advance to the next grade level or go to college. <laughs> the, young, the Young People's Chorus of New York City is a music education program that serves over 1,200 students in nine schools and one community center. Choristers learn to sing in languages ranging from Italian to Zulu. They have opportunities to perform at Carnegie Hall and Lincoln Center, and 100% of the young people's chorus finish high school on time and pursue higher education. The Young Shakespeare Workshop in Seattle, Washington is a summer program that inspires a passion for language in high school students, focusing on young people who speak English as a second language. Students move from learning sonnets and speeches to performing in professionally directed full-length Shakespeare plays. 100% of the summer participants obtain their high school diploma and 95% advance to college. Hello, I'm Vicki Kennedy. I'm chair of the President's Committee on the Arts and the Humanities Subcommittee on Education. And congratulations. Yes. It is my distinct honor to introduce our program's International Spotlight Award and our distinguished guest, Mrs. Rosa Rai Jalal, the wife of the Indonesian Ambassador to the United States. We have just heard some inspiring examples of programs here in the United States 
that are changing the lives of children through the arts and the humanities. And as we all know, the impact of these disciplines is universal. They have the ability to connect people across boundaries of language or country and remind us of our shared humanity. For this reason, our International Spotlight Award highlights the importance of arts and humanities learning across the globe. Indonesia is a nation of more than 17,000 islands more than, with more than 240 million people speaking more than 700 languages and dialects. Its diverse religious, ethnic, and cultural backgrounds come together in the Indonesian motto, unity and diversity. The country's ancient cultural vitality is reflected through its society, from batik designs to puppetry and theater, from music performed on gong chimes or bamboo instruments to Balinese dance traditions. Truly, there is an abundance of creativity to celebrate with this award. So in honor of these deep and diverse traditions, we are thrilled to present the International Spotlight Award to Kampun Halaman, a media arts program founded by two anthropologists in 2006. Through their youth media community labs, they provide young people ages 13 to 25 with the skills and the tools to produce their own videos. These films are about issues that are relevant to themselves and to their communities. Through screenings, networking forums, and online databases, this organization is creating a generation of young filmmakers and a generation of leaders who are informing and transforming their society. So congratulations to Kempton Hall. What would an occasion uh, <clears throat> about the arts and humanities be without some artistry and some humanity, um, both of which we will get from the Young People's Chorus of New York? Where are they? Here they come. Please come up. This year has sung on a Macy's parade campaign, uh, parade float. They did a 12 city tour of Japan, sold out, and they performed on the stage of the Metropolitan Opera with the American Ballet Theater. Their director, Francisco Nunez, their founder, uh, tells me that you took the train from New York and they're going to sing Billy Strayhorn's The A Train.
Station get to Harlem in a jiffy. Do, do, uh, take the train with the capital A. Skiddly dee, do, uh, bop, 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 to get to the White House. Hurry, <laughs> hurry, now it's coming. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do, parties in December. <laughs> I told him, I, I, we got to, Jeremy, where is he? Book him up. Book him up. You all are amazing. And um, you show us all why these awards are so important and why the work of all these organizations means so much. I mean, this is wonderful talent. And I know that each and every one of you are going to go on to do some amazing things. So I hope to see you for the holidays. <laughs> They're terrific. Let's give them another round of applause. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> and congratulations again to all of our award recipients, to all the young people that you inspired. Just keep doing what you're doing. We need you. We need you desperately. And thank you all for joining us here this afternoon. We'll see you again this time next year, right? All right. Take care.